Hi friends, my name is Akhil Ahmed and in this particular video tutorial I will show you that one of the SSIS package run fine from Visual Studio but it fails while running from the SQL agent job. So the agent of today's video tutorial is that how to troubleshoot the SQL agent job failure issue. So let's jump to the demo. So this is one of the SSIS package that I got which simply truncate one of the table DBF table on SQL Server 2017 instance and then it copies the same table from the 2019 instance okay so if you see the code here so we are using an execute sql task and we are just truncating the dbf table inside the test database on sql server 2017 instance and then using a data flow task we are copying the same table from the sql server 2019 instance okay so if i show you the data in the ssms so you can see this is the sql server 2019 instance so in the source database this particular table contains 279 records and if you see the same table in the SQL Server 2017 instance in the test database, so this table is empty as of now. So if I execute my SSIS package, then what it does, it simply truncates the table in the destination server and then it copies the table from the source server. So the package is running fine from the Visual Studio. So if I show you the data flow task, so it is copying 279 records and it is inserting the data to the 2017 instance. So you can see that the data was copied successfully and we have the same number of records whatever number of records we have in the source table so this is working absolutely fine so let me just truncate this table in the destination so that we can try to run it from the sql agent job okay so now let's try to create a sql agent job which can actually execute this ssis package okay so first thing that i will do i will simply copy the path of the ssis package so i can click here copy full path and the full path will be copied to the clipboard so to create a SQL agent job, we can go to the SQL agent and then we can right click on the jobs and click on new job. So we can call my job copy table. You can call it anything. And now you can go to the steps. In the steps, you need to create multiple steps or maybe single step like what exactly you want to do. For example, in a step, you can either execute an SSIS package or you can execute some SQL query as well. So I can click on new to create a new step here. And I will call my step as run SSIS package. Now from the type, I will select the SQL Server Integration Services package. Now from package store, I will select the file system and I can paste the path of the SSIS package. So I can click on OK. So our job is ready. If you want to add a schedule, then you can add a schedule here. And if you do not want to add a schedule, then you can leave it as it is. For now, I won't be adding any schedule because I already created a video like how to create a job so maybe you can watch that video I will share the link in the description of the video but here I will mainly target on the identifying the issue with the job so I can click on ok so our job is ready so now I can execute my job manually so I can right click on a job and I can click start job at this tab and then it will start executing so it seems like the job got filled here ok so I can close this one and if you want to know the reason of the failure so you can right click on a job and you can go to the view history so you can see here that this job was failed so I can maximize it and you need to click on this particular plus icon and then click on the lower side and then what you can do you can copy everything from here and maybe paste it inside a text editor so that you can look at the error in detail okay so this is the full error message if you look at the description here so you can see that login field for user work group desktop this one and OLDB record is available cannot open database test requested by the login so it seems like this might be related to some permissions that it is not able to open the test database however I was able to successfully execute the job from the visual studio but when I'm trying to execute it from the SQL agent job then it is failing it is saying that cannot open the database test so the reason for the SQL agent job failure can be anything. There can be multiple reasons for the SQL agent job failure. And here I will discuss one of the main reason why the SQL agent job fails. And I have spent a lot of time initially when I, I was trying to debug the reason like why it got failed. So I thought to make a video so that maybe someone can see this one if they are facing the issue and then they can try this one as well. Because the majority of the time when the SQL agent job fails, so the reason can be related to the permissions that you are trying to execute a package you are trying to write the data maybe to a csv file to excel or maybe to a sql server or maybe to any destination and the user who is actually running the sql service and who is actually running the sql agent job that user doesn't have the enough permissions so that is one of the reason 
so because we can clearly see that the login failed for this user so it seems like this user doesn't have the permissions on one of the database so now if you see what we are doing here in the SSIS package that we are copying the data we are reading the data from one server from the 2019 server and we are trying to write the data onto the another server 2017 server so the user who is actually executing the job okay and the user who is actually running the SQL services where we have scheduled the package that user should have access to read the data from the 2019 instance and it should have enough permissions to write the data to the 2017 instance okay so what exactly we need to do we can open the services.msc and then we can check the owner of the SQL services where the SQL agent job is scheduled so the SQL agent job is scheduled on the SQL Server 2019 instance so we can check the SQL services so this is the SQL Server 2019 so we need to check the owner so it seems like the owner is the local system okay so if the owner of the SQL service or if the owner of the SQL agent service if the owner is the local user so the local user won't be having the access on the SQL Server 2017 instance so the user for the SQL service and the user for the SQL Server agent that should be a user which has access on both the instances because we are fetching data from one instance and we are inserting data to another instance so this particular owner should be the user who has access on both the servers okay so if you right click and go to the properties and if you go to the log on so here the owner of the service is the local system account so the local system account will be accessible only for the SQL Server 2019 instance this user won't be having access on the 2017 instance so what should we do we need to select this option this account and we need to select the user which has access on both the servers so I have HP user my local user which is the admin which has access on both the servers so I can select this user from here click OK and then I can type the password here click apply so it is saying that the new logon name will not take effect until you stop and restart the service so I can click on OK OK and similarly I need to change the owner of this SQL server agent service as well so I can go to the properties log on this account and I can select an account which has access on both the servers so I can type my password click apply ok ok so now what I will do I will restart this service I can right click and click on restart yes so the SQL server service and SQL agent service will be restarted on the SQL Server 2019 instance okay so now the owner of the SQL Server service and the owner of the SQL agent service got changed to the HP user which has access on both the servers okay so now I can go back to the SQL Server agent here and as of now we don't have any data in the table now I can go back and I can expand the jobs and now I can just rerun the SQL agent job here start job at step so this time the SQL job ran fine and it should have successfully loaded the data to the 2017 instance yeah so this is one of the main reason why the job failed so if you right click and go to the history then you can see that the job was run in the second attempt yeah so this is one of the reason and maybe in the coming videos I can discuss some more reasons for the failure of the job so I think that's it for today's video thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button do subscribe to our channel Press the bell icon and click on all so that you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much.